All right, guys, let's get some MLB plays and props for Tuesday, April 2nd, slate of games. Trey, let's take a look at that leaderboard. How do you start us off? Yeah, guys, I got a win on the board. Back to my winning ways. Thank goodness. I'm hoping to keep it going with my picks for today. I gave out the Cubs minus one and a half against the Rockies. The Cubs, they won this game five to nothing. Imanaga, absolutely electric in this game. I'm definitely going to be backing him again in his next start. He was electric. Yeah, I'm currently 0-0 right now. I've got the Diamondbacks on the money line at home against the Yankees. Saw the Yankees get out to a quick 2-0 lead through two innings. So hopefully the D-backs can uh, figure something out and put some runs on the board and get us back on top so we can win that one. Trey, let's go to the props. Happy start us off. I haven't given up. I'm just slightly defeated, guys. I uh, 0-2 today. I gave out Cody Bellinger over 7.5 fans to score versus <laughs> the Rockies. Bellinger, he played a decent game, got a single and got two RBIs, but not enough to not, not just an over. That's only six points. And I also gave out Tristan McKenzie over 29 and a half fantasy score versus the Mariners, and he did not pitch very well. I already gave him the loss, and uh, last time I checked, he was only two innings through, but I already said he's not hitting the over. Yeah, and I had a one-on-one -on -one day. I had My batting prop was Jaron Duran of the Boston Red Sox go over 1.5 bases, top of the first single, top of the third single, easy cash there. Should have been a 2 0 day. My pitching prop was Michael Waka Waka to go under 2.5 earned runs going up against the Orioles. Had a no hitter through four innings, had one out in the fifth inning, then single, double, home run. He gave up three hits in the game, all three back to back to back, and it was a home run that cost us. He just left one hanging over the plate. So tough in the MLB with these pitchers. So uh, he did allow three runs. He, I thought he pitched fantastic, though. Royals got a steal still. I still think that. So one on one day for me. Trey, let's go to the game picks for tomorrow. How do you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm going to be talking about this Detroit Tigers going up against New York Mets game. And I think this is actually going to be a very entertaining game to watch. One team is playing hot, and the other one is playing like hot garbage. Uh, and give me the hot team here. I'm going to be taking the Tigers on the money line in this game at plus money at plus 108. I love that we're getting plus money with this play because I truly feel like the Tigers are the better team. And they are throwing out the better pitcher in this game because Detroit – they're throwing out Casey Mize, and Mize, he pitched really well during spring training. He pitched in 20 and one-third innings and finished with a 169 batting average allowed, paired with a 1.03 whip. So Mize, he did a great job of keeping the base pass clean, and he did not pitch at all last season due to an injury. So I think he's going to be looking forward to this start, and I think he's going to show out. And New York, they're throwing out Adrian Hauser in this game, and Hauser, he finished spring training with an 0-2 record, here with a 5.25 ERA. He came over from the Brewers, and I think he's still getting used to this new team and playing in New York. I expect the Tigers to jump out all over the Mets in this game. The Mets, they've only averaged 2.6 runs per game so far. That is no bueno. And the Tigers, they have lit up right-handed pitching throughout the first few days of the season, and I expect that to continue here in this game. But the main reason why I love the Tigers in this game is because Mize, he's going to hold the Mets to a low number, and then he's going to hand it off to an elite-level bullpen, at least so far this year, because as a team, they have an impressive 0.71 ERA so far as a bullpen, and I think that's going to continue here against the ailing Mets. Give me the Tigers on the money line against the Mets. Yeah, Trey, I like that play there for you. Uh, the Mets are an absolute joke right now, so love the Tigers there. For my play today, I'm going to be looking at the Angels going up against the Miami Marlins. I like the pitching matchup we have in this game. Jesus Azardo was one of my favorite guys last season. He has a ton of potential, and I think he's going to have a great season this year with the Miami Marlins. In his first game of the regular season, he went five innings against the Pirates, only gave up two hits, but one of those was a home run, giving up two runs, striking out eight in just five innings. Starting pitchers, everything will be going just perfectly fine. And then all of a sudden you give up one or two hits and everything just comes unraveled. He had a great start, but that home run kind of cost him. It's never easy pitching the MLB, but Jesus Cesaro last season was good with the Marlins. He's fought his way into a starting pitching role, taking on his first full season last year, coming away with a 500 record and a 3.58 ERA. The thing I like about Jesus Cesaro is that he typically keeps the bases clean. Last season and the prior season before that, he had a whip below 1.20. That stands for walks plus hits allowed per inning, and that's a very low number. And this season, he started with a .80 whip. The only bat that we really have to worry about in this game is Mike Trout because the Angels historically, especially over the last five or so seasons, have been a dumpster fire. And now that Otani's not on the field, they're even worse. The matchup for the Marlins is going to be a pretty easy one. Tyler Anderson, he's pitching on his fifth team in five years, starting with the Rockies, then going to the Padres, Pirates, Seattle, Dodgers, now finding himself with the Angels. It hasn't been a great career for Tyler Anderson. He is one game above 500 in his career, posting a 4.35 ERA. Last season, he had a 5.43 ERA with the Angels in 27 games started. And with Jesus Lazardo on the mound, we have a big advantage, I believe, in that category. Give me Miami here, minus one and a half 
on the run line as the play. Did I not give you the? Did I not give you the thing right when we started? Uh, you may have. Uh, okay. I don't think I, I did, but anyway, it doesn't matter. All right, let's go to player props. Let me start us off. Yeah, guys, I'm gonna go with Juan Soto here, and I'm gonna take him to go over eight and a half fantasy score versus the Diamondbacks. I really love this over for Soto in this game, even though he's going up against an ace and Zach Gallon. I think that kind of allows us to get this nice discount line here because usually this is set at nine, nine and a half. And I expect Soto to enjoy a nice game here. And that's because he's simply playing red hot right now. Soto and pinstripes is a different animal. We are recording before their game did finish yesterday. So uh, these stats are before yesterday's game. And Soto, he entered that game with a 529 batting average. He already has three walks, four RBIs, and two runs scored. And I expect that type of dominance to continue here in this game. Soto, he already has a dinger on his register against Gallon, so we know that he's not going to be backing down on this matchup. And pitchers just cannot pitch around Soto like they love to do because Judge, he is right behind him in the batting lineup. We might see another Soto dinger here. Give me Juan Soto to go over 8.5 fantasy score against the Diamondbacks. Yeah, I love that play there for you. Uh, for my batting prop, it's going to be Fernando Tatis Jr. to go over 1.5 bases. I wouldn't even be surprised if this is over 2.5 bases going up against the Cardinals. I don't think it's going to be 2.5 bases, but it could be because Miles McColes is going to be on the mound again for the Cardinals. And every time we see him, we are going to attack him on this channel. And his opening day game, he left off right where he started from last season, giving up seven hits, five earned runs, and four innings pitched against the Dodgers. He's going down as maybe one of the worst opening day pitchers in MLB history looking at his past performances. But in this game against the Padres, he's probably going to run into some more problems, especially facing off against the top four hitters for the Padres. Tatis, he's the leadoff guy now for the Padres. He's collected seven hits so far in his 23 at-bats, averaging 304 on the season. He should be able to see the ball very well off Miles McCullough and go over this 1.5 bases, hopefully in the first at-bat. Give me Fernando Tatis Jr. over 1.5 bases as the play. Trey, let's go to the graphic. Have you start us off? Yeah, guys, my pitching prop today, it's going to be Jacob Junis to go over his fancy score going up against the Twins. I really love this over for Junis in this game because we're going to see him have himself a day, and I believe that for a few reasons. The first reason is his matchup against the Twins. They are not having great at-bats this season consistently. They are once again striking out at a high clip. They were bottom five in the MLB last season in strikeouts per game, and they're currently the most strikeoutable team this season with an average of 10.28 times per game. That is no bueno. We've seen poor plate discipline after poor plate discipline, and it is just not fun to watch. And Junis, he averages a little bit more than one strikeout per inning. So we just need him to pitch into the fifth, the sixth inning for me to feel confident in this over. And Junis, you should walk out of this game with a quality start, and that's what's going to push us to this over here, let alone the win that's going to be delivered to him. And if his fancy score line does not drop, we can just hammer his uh, over strikeouts because he's going to be piling them up here against the lowly Twins. Give me Jacob Junis. I'm going to take him to go over his fancy score against the Twins. Yeah, Trey, I like that play there for you. For my pitching prop, it's going to be Brian Bay over the Boston Red Sox to go under 2.5 earned runs going up against the Athletics. In his first game of the season, Bayo went five innings, gave up five hits, two earned runs. And again, whenever pitchers leave one over the plate, it's always tough because he did give up a home run in that game. He was having a great outing, and then that one home run kind of destroyed everything. But he did finish off with a pretty good opening day start. That was a problem for Bayo last season, leaving balls over the plate. And I said it many times last year, if he could just keep the ball in the ballpark, he'd be talked about as a Cy Young candidate. Last season, he gave up 24 home runs. That's simply too many for a guy who only started 28 games. That's nearly a home run per game. I do think he's a fantastic young, talented arm. I believe in him. He's shown glimpses of elite talent, but he still has to get through some of the growing pains of being a young guy in the MLB going up against the most talented players in the world. And this game is getting a pretty favorable matchup going up against the Oakland Athletics, who have had some of the worst talent in the NBA. Notice how I still said talent, Trey, because these are MLB players. They're just some of the worst of the best. I was looking through the lineup whenever I was looking at Bayo's stats, uh, who he might have to face. I recognize four names of the nine hitters for the Athletics. I'm not going to pretend like I know everybody in the MLB. We've got a couple familiar names from last season for this athletic team. Other than that, I'm lost. So far this season, they're hitting 215 as a team. That's going to lose them a lot of games. Give me Brian Bayo, under 2.5 earned runs of the play against the Oakland <laughs> In my notes, it says Oakland Athletics ass. Uh, as, never mind. Oakland Athletics has to play. Try to go to the graphic. How do you start us off? Yeah, guys, I went with the Tigers on the money line against the Mets. I just kind of feel like they have the better team. They're definitely playing the better baseball right now, and you always just got to back the better and hotter teams in baseball. I mean, what are we talking about? Also going with Juan Soto over 8.5 fantasy score against the Diamondbacks, going up against Zach Gallen. 
not scared of him, and neither is Juan Soto. And my last play is Jacob Junis over his fantasy score against the Twins, not the Angels. Uh, I feel like he's going to have himself a day here. Yeah, and I like Miami Marlins here with Jesus Azardo on the mound. Minus one and a half on the run line against the Angels. Again, give me Fernando Tatis Jr. Over 1.5 bases going up against Miles McCullis. And then my favorite pitcher, Brian Bayo, under 2.5 earned runs going up against the Oakland Athletics is what I said. Trey, that's going to do it for the MLB Plays and Props for tonight. If you guys enjoyed the content, please sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video, and thanks for watching. We also have 12,000 subs coming right around the bend. We're at 10,200. We're going to give away two tickets to anybody, to any game they want, NBA, NFL, college basketball. It doesn't matter. We can wait until the new season for NFL. Any game you want to go, whenever we get to 12K, we're going to have that uh, giveaway coming up as well. Leaderboard. We had multiple questions this morning about how to become a member for the YouTube channel. Let's do that really quick tutorial. You're going to go to YouTube.com. You're going to go to Bears Profit Plays. You're going to search it in. You're going to hit our thing. There's a join button right just to the right of the subscribe. You're going to click that. There's two options. You have the Bear Pack for $4.99. That gives you access to YouTube member plays. And then you have the Bear Pack Gold for $7.99 a month. That gives you access to our member plays on YouTube. And it gives you a one-month membership to our website, bearsprofitplays.com. So if you get the Bear Pack Gold, you save yourself 2 bucks a month. A little bit cheaper if you want to do that. But that is the tutorial for anybody that needed it. We had multiple questions today through email about how to do it, and it wasn't working. But if you want to know, there it is right there. Trey, 